Hey guys, what's up? It's Dragoon here, and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a discussion. I'm here with a friend of mine, Matt. His channel he just started up called Matt's Mad Lab. Tell me, tell, go ahead and tell everybody what it's about real fast before we get into what we're going to talk about today. Okay, well first of all, I'd just like to welcome you all to this video, and I hope you enjoy what we're doing here today. Um, but first of all, my channel is basically gameplay videos, um, reviews on TV or anime, um as well as tech discussions like we're currently doing right now. That's pretty much what you're going to find on my channel, so if any of that interests you, stop by. I just started, already have like full videos up, so I already have a good amount of content for you guys. Alright, so let us get into this first tech talk today. We're going to be talking about the new Nintendo 3DS, which I'm sure you guys have heard about, but we figured it would be decent to go ahead and start off this little segment, especially on Match Channel. It'd be fun to upload here as well. Just to give our insight about yeah, it and what it's going to be like. Mm -hmm. So, new 3DS, what do we have to look forward to if we decide to pick one of these up? Well, if you decided to pick one of these up, a few things you have to look forward to is it is it is slightly more powerful than the current generation of 3DSs. Right, it's got a... the CPU clocks in it a bit faster. I'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure how much. I don't even think they've announced how much. No, I don't think they did. They regardless, just faster. faster CPU, right? As well as it's thinner, and the screen is just a little hair bigger. And I think it's also, the system itself is just a little bit wider, too. Yeah, it's wider, but it's thinner, so. Which is nice. Um, also, the I think the most important feature that the new 3DS has is the face tracking 3D on the camera on the inside. So basically, before, as you guys probably know, you know, you kind of had to maintain that sweet spot, which... I'm not going to lie. A lot of people are like, oh my gosh, that sweet spot was so hard to maintain. I really didn't <laughs> yeah. think it was. I'm, I'm not the kind of person who like is moving my hands around all the time when I'm playing my handheld games because I don't really have a whole lot of games that require the use of the gyroscope. Um, granted, like there are games like Ocarina of Time 3D, which you could, which was the, you gave the option to use the gyroscope and that created a little bit of a paradox because it was either, do I want the 3D on and use, and not use the gyroscope, or do I want to turn off the 3D and have be able to use the gyroscope controls without it causing much of a fuss? And so now, if, if that sort of thing is something that bothers you or something that gives you trouble, you won't have to worry about that anymore, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And it's honestly probably the way the system should have been from the get-go. Yeah, definitely. I know from uh, my point of view, I know I can't sit still when I do a lot of stuff. So when I'm playing my handhelds, I'm always moving, I'm either walking... Or I'm just, like, rocking in my chair. I can't sit still, so the 3D really messes with me. I'm just very antsy, so I'm really excited to see this face tracking system come into play. So, do you usually play with the 3D turned off? Yes, I usually play with the 3D turned off because, like I said, I can't sit still, so it gives me a headache quite often. And maybe with this new face tracker, it won't. Yeah, that's definitely something that I think is its probably the biggest selling point of mm -hmm. the new Nintendo 3DS. Let's... let's Let's sidetrack for just a second and talk about how terrible of a name it is because yeah. it's so... Like, Nintendo... It's lazy. Come on. Like, I feel like almost anything could have been better than... Anything could have been better. Like, how, what a, like every, a lot of people the were advocating for I, Super 3DS. That would have like been perfectly Nintendo. fine because I googled the new 3DS to try to get information on it and I just kept getting, like, ads for, to buy a new 3DS yeah, like of the, the old generation. Like, this was back when they first yeah. were talking about it, right? Yeah. yeah. And, that, and, like... And we already know, everybody already knows that the one of the biggest problems the Wii U has is that people think it's just an add-on for the Wii. Yeah. People mm -hmm. don't know it's a, its own separate console. And I kid you not, I got I got a Wii U around Christmas time, and I'm playing it out in my living room because I was using the, the gamepad to play just because I felt like doing that. And my brother comes up and he's like, he's like, oh, what is that? I'm like, oh, I'm playing Wii U. And he's like, so what game are you playing? I'm like, oh, the new Smash Brothers. He's like, they made a new Smash Brothers for Wii? I'm like, no, it's for Wii U. He's like, isn't that just the controller? I'm like... No, it's it's an entirely new system. He's like, what? I was like, it's it's the successor to the Wii. The general public does not know. Yeah, and Nintendo knows that they don't know about the regular Wii. So why would they? I just feel like they're making the same mistake twice. Yeah, they they definitely are. Um, I personally have didn't get the confusion with the Wii U and the Wii, but I can clearly see, and I got the confusion with the 3DS and the new 3DS. Because if you ask for a new 3DS, it's just like, do you want a new 3DS or do you want the new 3DS? Yeah, and then it's going to be like, well, I want to use new 3DS. <laughs> or I want I want a new old 3DS. It just, it's it's dumb. Yeah, End it, of story. it really is. Any, any name could have been better than what they chose. <sighs> but, on the topic of what does it do, um, it's got two extra shoulder buttons, yeah. which... 
I've always found the naming of Nintendo shoulder buttons to be extremely weird. Z, Z, R, Z, L. I don't know why. It just it's awkward to me it for should, whatever reason. I feel like I feel like they would've been better off following something like I don't know. I like the way Xbox does it personally because they do uh, bumper left left trigger and right trigger, left bumper, right bumper, and so it's very easy to remember what's what. Yeah. Um, like I just feel like Z R Z L. Like I mean, I I feel like it's kind of a throwback to their like N sixty four where they had the Z button. Yeah, the GameCube had a C button too, mm-hmm. or a Z button. Z too. button was up top. But, but like, I feel it like just, it's just, it's just, I just it's just it's awkward. It's confusing me. when you only had one Z button, it was fine, but when you have two. Um, shoulders and it's like ZLZR and like in, with PlayStation it's R1 and R2 yeah like it's you cannot mix that up it, it, that's just I, that's the personal thing I, I, I think that's something you can just get over by playing with it enough and yeah I, just, I, I, I read that it's very comfortable having those extra shoulder buttons because then you can press the new ones with your fingertips and the uh, the, the, old, original the older ones. ones the original ones with the middles of your finger and I yeah. heard it fits really well which is um, nice another nice thing I like is I like how they ha- add the uh, new little uh thumbstick the analog knob. the analog knob there we go and because in a lot of games that'll help control the camera and i've know in a lot of games i played like i've been playing luigi's mansion the camera is horrible in that and i struggle with it sometimes the only thing that sucks though is unless the game supports mm-hmm. the circle pad pro i mean you're it's not going to be useless. useless it's going to be completely useless um what's interesting to know if i remember correctly the the analog nub on the new 3ds it doesn't move it tracks it tracks the the movement of your thumb on it, but it, it, the, the piece of hardware itself does not move like a regular circle pad would. So it's, it's and I, we had this discussion mm-hmm. the other yeah. day, it's sort of like those old um, nubs that you'd find in the middle of a keyboard the old trackers on the laptop. in the middle of a keyboard. But here's the advantage to that. From an, from an engineering background I can bring to this, it's one less moving part. Since, mm-hmm. the, since that tracking nub isn't moving, it has a less chance of breaking and wearing down. Yeah, which, as we've seen, people had problems with yeah. their original analog it's not probably, playing Smash. It's probably a good decision to make that thing solid. But as long as it works, that's what matters. Um, some other interesting facts. the Obviously, the, uh, the new 3DS is going to support NFC and Amiibos, which, just figured I'd bring this up. I found this guy. <laughs> found Look a that cute little guy. Look at him. Found him, um, what was it, a couple days ago, right? Yeah, a few days ago. Uh, last one they had. Last one they had. It was completely on a whim. We decided to go out to a Best Buy, and this guy was here, and so I immediately picked him up. This is the first Amiibo I got, so uh, I'm pretty happy with it, because since Kid Icarus is one of my favorite Nintendo franchises, and I'm hoping hoping for a Wii U game, but probably won't get it. Um, Amiibos themselves are really interesting to stole that amount, that kind of data in what seems to be an action figure almost, and a figurine. And the fact that you can uh, cross-platform it from the Wii U to the 3DS as well, because especially the new 3DS is going to have the reader. Yeah, it's built right into the touch screen. Mm-hmm. So I definitely would pick up like a Yoshi Amiibo. That'd be yeah. fun for me. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think the last new feature, unless we're forgetting something, is the... And it's not even really that new. It's the fact that it uses uh, micro SD cards instead of mm-hmm. regular SD cards. And this is just bad design, too. The The micro SD card slot, I don't know if you knew this, is underneath the yeah, back. it's screwed in. It's screw- Like, you have to pull the back plate off of the console. After you unscrew it. Yeah, after you unscrew it, and then you can take out the SD card. And, and it's just like, why? You can't even use a regular screwdriver to do it. You need one of those micro screwdriver sets that you use if you ever build computers. You know what I'm talking about. Like I don't, I I don't know. I really don't understand why they decided to do that. It's it's very weird, in my opinion. It is weird. Maybe 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 it was part of the design to make the entire system thinner, or to because they added extra buttons in it as well. They might have needed more be. space. That could be. I, I I don't know. It's interesting to and let, think about. We may never know. Yeah, but it's Nintendo. Who knows? But on the bright side, because you're thinking it's a micro SD card, and then the old 3DSs have regular SD cards. So you're thinking, you're wondering how you can do a system transfer because you have to switch SD cards. You can't exactly put a regular SD card in a micro SD card slot, and what if you don't have the screwdrivers? Well, Nintendo actually thought ahead on this, and they actually did their homework. And uh, with if you're doing transferring data from an old 3DS to the new 3DS, you don't need to switch SD cards. It just, oh, yeah, just transfers the data, some of the data through the internet, like the old transfer data does, and it also transfers some of it through the infrared connection. And so I think Nintendo did a really good job taking the initiative on that just to make sure you keep all your saved data. Yeah, because the last thing you want is to lose something. Yeah, I mean, that would have been, been a deal breaker for me if I couldn't transfer my data. 
So I believe we've covered pretty much everything. Um, the question is now, is it worth picking up at launch? What do you think? Like we can give our each of our own opinions, although I if I believe we have the same yeah, one, so I believe we have the same one as well. Well, I'll start off. At launch, I would not rush out to pick one up for a few things. First of all, it doesn't come with an AC adapter. Oh gosh. Unless... So their Nintendo's reasoning for not having an AC adapter was to reduce the cost of it. But but Here's the you can go online and you can get an AC adapter. For under ten dollars, I think it's like what eight bucks, something yeah, like that. You can get a brand new mm -hmm. Nintendo certified AC adapter for under ten dollars, which means if I, the consumer, can buy this thing for under ten bucks, it probably co it costs probably Nintendo like at most two dollars yep. to manufacture. Mm -hmm. They're not saving anybody money. It says, it, and it's the same price. Like the console itself is the same price as it's always yeah. been. It's two hundred. It's still two hundred dollars. They're just making a little bit extra money, and I just I see no reason for it. And but we're gonna get people who more likely than not will say, "Well, guys, Nintendo's been withholding the AC adapter in other countries for ages now." And while that's true, does that, that mean it was a like right. good? Does that yeah? Does that mean it was right from the beginning? No, no. I think, in my opinion, and I don't care if it's like, well, they don't. People don't want to have extra AC adapters. A, I don't think there's anything wrong with having it extra no i'd rather have one more than one not enough yeah and b anytime you buy a console be it handheld or home console you should have everything you need in the box mm -hmm. to use it right from the get-go and like what, what was the comparison we made it'd be like selling a selling like a, a ps3 like, without, yeah, the, power without the power cable you just you don't do that it's just now it's just it's incredibly silly it is. As a consumer, I don't like it, but from Nintendo's standpoint, it probably makes a little bit of sense because they would make a few extra dollars for each AC adapter and unit they sold. If, say, a million people buy this thing, then they're going to be making, like, say if they sell it for, to get two more bucks from this deal, they'd be making an extra $2 million that they wouldn't before. So while it may be a good business decision for them, financially speaking, it really upsets a lot of the consumers. And consumers should come first. Yeah. Um, in general, but we don't need to talk about business uh, business <laughs> ethics here. So, is it worth picking up one at launch? Any other reasons besides um, the AC adapter for you? For me, another reason is currently there's only one exclusive game announced for it. And that is Xenoblade Chronicles, a port of the game that was released for Wii a couple of years ago. If you, you like Xenoblade, then, I guess. Then you might be interested in picking it up. But honestly, I, I'm i not a fan of it, so it's one less reason not to get it because all the games that are currently out, I can play on my current 3DS without spending a lot of money. And let's be real. At, at this current time, because we don't know the state of the system itself, Nintendo nor third-party developers are going to abandon the massive massive install base that the regular 3DS has. I mean, the 3 the 3DS is, has sold so many units. Mm -hmm. If they were to develop, just immediately start developing exclusive games for the new platform, and I use new lightly here, they're going, no one's going to buy it. They're not going to make money. Yeah. And they realize, and every, they know that. So, I just, I think waiting is where it's the key. And another, another, um, important piece of knowledge is and I've I've had this discussion with um, so a few other people there are people who believe that it's like oh if I get it and it has the faster CPU it's gonna make my other games run better and that's that's not true if they are not built to utilize the processing yeah. power of the new CPU it doesn't matter like yeah. there's been people have done tests like and they use Pokemon for example because mm -hmm. Pokemon X and Y and I believe Omega Ruby and Alpha yep. Sapphire the frame rate dipped hardcore if you were the 3D turned on mid-battle. Yeah. People would set up a 3DS and a new 3DS and check, and it was the exact same. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no noticeable improvement with these games because they're just not built to use it. Yeah. Now, what are some deal breakers for you? For me? That I may not have hit. For me, like I said, it's this, it's the same thing. It's It's the fact of the matter that... There's no, I mean, the, the adapter is, it's 10 more dollars I have to shell out. Mm. And I don't really want to do that. I yeah. don't want to spend more money than I have to. And it's the fact that, and I'll get to this more in a second, it's the fact that, like I said, there is no, there's no, 
there's one exclusive game. I shouldn't say there's no, because there is one. But that's it. There's mm -hmm. one. And my biggest thing is I'm wondering if the new 3DS is going to take the same footsteps that the DSi took. The DSi and the new 3DS are very, very similar to each other. Mm -hmm. The DSi came out near the original DS's lifespan. I, I have a DSi, and I love it, but I only got it because I got a good deal on it back in the day. Yeah. If that deal back in the day did not exist, I wouldn't have gotten it. Mm -hmm. And the DSi, well, basically what happened was it was released near the end of the lifespan. It had, I believe, a better CPU, and I think some. I think it had more RAM. And, of course, it sported a new user interface mm -hmm. and the DSi shop and all that. So it did have a, it was a decent upgrade. It was thinner. It had cameras. It, it was almost like a new system, but it wasn't. It wasn't. And the, the regular 3DS, the... The first type of 3DS came out at the most two years later. Mm -hmm. I, I could check. I don't remember the exact dates. but And how many exclusive games came out for the DSi at retail that weren't on the shop? Four? Five? Somewhere around there? Does anyone remember any of them? No. They weren't good. None mm -hmm. of them were like yeah. blockbuster games. You could still play. If you had a DS or a DS Lite... You could still play all of the DS's mm -hmm. hit games. You could play Pokemon Black and White. You could play uh, Dragon Quest, I think it was at 9? Dragon Quest Ten. I don't remember. The new Dragon Quest that was released yeah. for the DS. Mm -hmm. You could play it, and that was a beautiful game for the original DS. But every game that came out near the end of the DS's lifespan, you could get your hands on. And you didn't need a DSi to do it. Is it going to be the same way with this? There's only one way to find out, that's just to wait. Yeah. And the thing is... If Nintendo really does plan on making this, it, you, like, you really don't know. You don't know how much of a successor this is going to be. Is it going to be like the DSi? Or is this really Nintendo's new, new system. system that they're going to start developing games for? Only time will tell. Exactly. And just one more thing you guys should be wary about if you, if you decide to look at buying the new 3DS. It's not a big issue because they had the same issue with the regular 3DS, but it still has the floppy hinges. And I don't know mm. how you guys feel about that. It doesn't bother me too much, but I know some people absolutely hate it. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, that's pretty much all my deal breakers. Mm -hmm. What? So say down the say down the line, uh, you know, Nintendo continues to support this, mm -hmm. and they don't. And let's just real quick sidetrack. There has been a semi like Nintendo hasn't said anything about it, but I forget who it was IBM. Some company, mm -hmm. I cannot remember who it was right now, they announced that they were working on a new chipset for a Nintendo console. Is it a portable or a home console? We don't know. But they are working on processors for a Nintendo console. I don't know what that says. Like, I feel like, I feel like this is, I'm going to try to keep this very short. Nintendo should not drop the Wii U support. The Nintendo should not back out on the Wii U and make a new home console. The Wii U's only been out for, what, like three years yeah. now? It's too soon. Mm -hmm. But... Could it be a new portable console? Are we going to see the same thing that happened with the DSi? I don't know. Not enough information right Not now enough to, information, make, of course. to make a call. But back to what I was saying before. Say they continue to support this. What would get you to buy one of these? What would get me to buy one of these? Well, perhaps a similar reason what got me to buy an original 3DS is an exclusive Pokemon game or Smash Bros. Smash Bros. got me to buy the uh, old 3DS. So anything like an exclusive Pokemon game or maybe another game similar to Smash Bros, maybe a Zelda game, would get me to buy the new one if they were exclusives for that one. Right. So exclusive content is is what sells any console, yeah. really. Mm -hmm. Why do you buy a PlayStation over an Xbox? Or why do you buy a Wii U over a PS4? Yeah. You it's get it the for kind, the exclusive kinds content. of games you want to play. And so, I mean, I'm the same way. Would a new Pokemon, like Gen 7, would that push me to get a new 3DS? Maybe. Maybe a new, I don't know, Metroid game? Oh, yeah, definitely. We haven't gotten a, we we haven't gotten a Metroid, Metroid game in a long time. I think the last one was Other M for the Wii. Yeah. And that was very so, polarized on who liked it and who, made, who, if, who did not. If they did come out with a new Metroid game for this new 3DS, I would probably pick it up. Because I last Metroid game I played... For a portable console, for a portable console was uh, Metroid Fusion, mm. and that was for like Game the Boy advanced Vance. SP yeah, back so. in the day. Yeah, if you guys remember that, but that was a fun game, and I would enjoy if they took that route again, or yeah. maybe even now since the new 3DS is more powerful, maybe they could go into a 3D situation. And so, new, new exclusive content is going to be the most important. 
But with that being said, do you have any closing remarks to end this discussion on the new 3DS? Closing remarks. I think that if if it follows, here's what I think. If it follows the path of the DSi, and you follow the same actions you took when you got the DSi, then you'll be fine. But if it doesn't follow the path of the DSi, and you still don't take the if you take the same actions you got from the DSi, you'd still be fine. So if you wait to buy it, either way you're going to be fine because if there's mm -hmm. nothing on it, then you don't have it. You didn't spe waste you that didn't money. Spend the money. But down the road, you could even get a used one for less, and then that could help pay for your AC adapter. And boom, you still make out. Or who knows? Maybe, maybe they'll start including an AC adapter. Maybe they will. Maybe there. Maybe there's going to be a big bug with the first batch of games that they the systems they have to take recall and fix. Um, or maybe they'll come out with some sort of deal where. You, can turn in your old uh, handheld for 75 bucks or something to pay toward a new one. You know, that'd be nice. So, once again, only time will tell. Exactly. So, with that, you guys, we hope you've enjoyed this discussion on the new Nintendo 3DS. If you have any other comments that you would add to, uh, like to add, be sure you leave them in the comment section below. Be sure you check out Matt's page. It's Matt's Mad Lab. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure I have a link to it in the description. And with that, we will catch you guys next time. Take care.